even though the vast majority of streaming on the web is still H.264, the whole world talks about AV1 and HEVC and even VVC. Which one of them will be the next codec king, AV1 or HEVC? And when will that happen? Let's ask John Ozer. Hey, John, I have a question for you. <laughs> Dude. Everyone nods their heads when they hear the word codec. We all know that those mysterious things exist and they are absolutely necessary to do uh, exactly what? What are codecs and why do we need them? Codecs are technologies that compress video to make it smaller and allow us to deliver videos over the internet. So anytime you see a video on the internet, it's it's uh, compressed with a codec and decompressed at the uh, at the playback side. And not only do we have video codecs, we also have audio codecs. So everything you see, everything you hear is compressed with a codec, which essentially is a compression technology. There are open source and standard based codecs. Can you explain the difference and the underlying sort of a war between them? How much time do you have? So there, there are two basic kinds of codecs. There are standard-based codecs, and those are the codecs you've heard of uh, going back to MPEG-1, MPEG-2, H.264, HEVC, VVC, LCEVC, and EVC for the sake of completeness. And typically, these are royalty-bearing, which means you pay royalties to use these codecs, although the vast majority of royalties are paid by device manufacturers like Apple or Samsung, not content producers. And then you have what are called open source codecs where the owner of the codec, in the case of VP9, it's Google. In the case of AV1, it's the Alliance for Open Media. They claim that they own all the patents that underlie those technologies. But in maybe two, three years ago, a company called Sysval opened up patent pools for both VP9 and AV1. So it's really in doubt, and we're probably going to have to see litigation to figure out whether Google does own all the patents for VP9 or not. But in any case, uh, very few content producers end up paying royalties. It's always on the device manufacturer. H.264 remained dominant for years. Why? Okay, several reasons. First, H.264 is a really good codec. Second, it plays everywhere. Third, the, the codecs that are trying to replace it, AV1 and HCBC, don't play everywhere. So the economic benefit of supporting the new codecs is diluted. You only get the benefit when you distribute the devices that can actually play it. And probably the most important thing is that it costs a lot to implement a new codec. You've got to encode each video to that codec, and you've also got to do a lot of testing to make sure it plays on all your target devices. Now, the cost benefit, uh, the bandwidth savings, keeps dropping as bandwidth prices drop, and, and they've dropped significantly over the last 10 or 15 years, which again dilutes the benefit of supporting a new codec. We're not going to talk about high heels, but let's talk about Achilles heels slash weak points. Both AV1 and HEVC have them. AV1 in the living room and on Apple devices and HEVC in browsers. Can you diagnose? Sure. So when we look at a codec or, or more specifically codec adoption, we look at three markets. We look at the browser, we look at the living room, and we look at mobile. Now, AV1 was supported in most browsers almost right away because most of the browser vendors are in the Alliance for Open Media. Um, it, it supported on Android in mobile devices, but not Apple. And in the living room, support is, is nascent. It's just beginning. In addition, in, or in addition, in the living room, HDR support is not as uh, comprehensive as you get for HEVC. So if you're a, a premium content producer with you know, lovely 4K HDR videos, you're going to want to use HEVC for the foreseeable future. Now, we have seen recent signs that Apple is opening up to playing AV1. Pretty ironic. Apple is a founding member of the Alliance for Open Media, but none of their devices play AV1 at this point. We saw last month that some versions of Safari are starting to play AV1 video. And if they open that up into the entire Apple infrastructure, that will be a huge deal for AV1. Same analysis for HEVC. In the browsers, until November of last year, HEVC didn't play in Chrome. 
And that was a huge deal because Chrome has a dominant share, which meant if you were a producer, you really couldn't consider sending ATVC to browsers. Now in mobile, support is probably 86 plus percent in hardware, which is much better than what you get with AV1. And in the living room, support for ATVC is 100% because uh, that's the codec that was used for all the 4K videos. And HDR support is also 100%, and it's fully tested on all the target devices you care about. So from my perspective, AV1 is really worth looking at if you're distributing to the browser, while ATVC is the format of choice if you're going to the living room, particularly with 4K HDR content. In September 2022, which means after seven years of completely ignoring it in favor of AV1, Google fixed a bug and enabled HVC support on all supported platforms, including Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android. Why? I guess it's hard not to support a format that's the primary recording format on the phones that you're selling to everybody. So specifically, the, the, the Pixel phone records in HVC as the preferred format. And it's kind of silly to have a phone recording in HEBC if your browser doesn't play HEBC. So I guess Google saw that the strategic value of supporting their phone customers was more important than the strategic value they saw to promoting AV1. Now, it's important to recognize there are a couple of limitations to HEBC support in Chrome. Number one, there is no DRM support at this point, which means if it's premium content that you're trying to protect, you can't do it. Number two, I think, and it's a little bit fuzzy here, you you need underlying ATVC hardware or software support already on the system. Now, I don't think that's a big deal because most systems in in 2023 support ATVC hardware-based playback. But if you don't have ATVC playback on the system, it's not going to work, meaning that Chrome doesn't ship with an ATVC decoder. It just supports what's on the system. What codecs do NetInt products support? So the T408 series of products with the Codensity G4 uh, ASIC supports H.264 and HEBC input and output. The Quadra line of products based upon the Codensity G5 ASIC support VP9 input, H.264 input, and HEBC input, and H.264 HEBC and AV1 output. Here at NetInt, we are fully prepared to whatever might come. Our G4-based line of products, T408, T432, transcode to H.264 and HEVC, the G5-based Quadra line, T1, T1A, T2A, support H.264, HEVC, and AV1. But realistically, when would AV1 be fully implemented? Implementation is kind of a tough word. You know, in in terms of the decode side, where it's going to play, we started to see very encouraging signs, as as I mentioned a moment ago, in 2023 from Apple, where it looks like the Apple platforms, or all three platforms, which, you know, it's computer, it's mobile, and it's living room with the Apple TV, if they start to play AV1 in the next you know, the next 12 months, that's going to be a huge deal. Obviously not in the next 12 months, but in the next, you know, 24 to 36 months. But it's important to recognize that a lot of the companies have already started using AV1. Now, most of the first adopters were in the Alliance for Open Media, no surprise there. So you saw YouTube jumping on it very early, you saw Meta jumping on it, and you saw Netflix jumping on it in late 2021, sending videos to the living room. Now, we're already starting to see other companies, you know, taking notice. For example, I spoke on a panel a few weeks ago, and a representative from Warner Media said that 2023 was the year that they were going to take a good hard look at using AV1 for some of the properties that aren't protected with DRM. So I think, you know, we're going to see a lot of motion in 2023, particularly if Apple makes it clear that they're going to support AV1 on all three of their their, uh, playback platforms. So if AV1, realistically, we'd get implemented in (laughs) years, then shall the ability to transcode AV1 play any role when deciding between which ASIC-based product shall be implemented right now? 
Well, of course, Anita, you definitely need AV1 because we're the only company that supplies it in an ASIC-based transcoder. I mean, just kidding. There's, as I mentioned a moment ago, there's a lot of companies who have decided that AV1 is on their roadmap. And obviously, if it is on your roadmap, you want to buy a device that supports it. On the other hand, you're going to buy a transcoder to serve you for the next three to five years. AV1 really could happen within that time frame. So you'd be silly you know, all of their things being equal to buy a transcoder that doesn't support it.